I would like to share with you seven tender suggestions as to how to live this absolutely insane and extraordinary period that we found ourselves in. A period in which it is quite obvious something is dying in horror and pain and agony, and something, something amazing, potentially, if we really work with it, is being born. I believe the meaning of this is that the mother is giving us time, you and I, to regroup at the deepest possible level so as to become calm and joyful and passionate and compassionate and strong enough to really, when this cloud of the coronavirus starts to dissipate, step up and serve her in sacred activism with the fullness of all we are. The first suggestion, and this is quite a strong suggestion from your old uncle, is that you stay safe because you are going to be needed. We're going into a long, bitter, brutal, amazing, frightening, extraordinary struggle for the future of the planet. And it's going to need the seekers safe and whole and well. Be aware that this is a virus that could very well mutate. Be aware that there are other viruses out there. There are 1,400 coronaviruses carried by the bats and there are other potential pandemics. Don't panic, keep safe. My second tender suggestion is to make sure that although you are in lockdown, that you do what I call small acts of mercy, small acts of deep compassion. You know that there are people starving. You know that there are homeless on those streets who are so terrified of going to shelters because they're petri dishes for this virus. You know that there are friends of yours who are going through suicidal depression because they're waking up to the extremity of the situation that we're in. Make sure that you help in whatever way is appropriate for you and do so with joy and gratitude that you can and something amazing will start growing in you. My third suggestion is that you deepen passionately and focusedly your spiritual practice. This is a time in which those who have for years and years done serious practice are doing well despite everything that's exploding out there. Because through the grace of the beloved and through the grace of the efforts that we've made out of love for the beloved, we're being fed calm, we're being fed joy, we're being fed radical insight into the nature of this crisis and that is keeping us steady so if that hasn't been flashed out in the core of your heart that deathless certainty of your own deathless truth practice 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 because i know that there is an immense wave of grace coming to us from the core of God to give us that next level of our realization to equip us for the work of birthing the birth in the middle of the death ahead and that this shutdown is the time in which if we practice with deepest devotion and passion we will make the most astounding progress this is happening to me. I have made more inner progress in these last two months than I've made in the last 10 years because I've known that the time is now. And in turning to the beloved, I found that the beloved has given me absolutely extraordinary radiance of peace and of joy and of focus. The full suggestion is I've found it absolutely essential to what I call stay aware. Look, terrible things are coming down. I don't have to enumerate them. They're exploding on your television screens. You know that. But also amazing 
things are appearing. So what we're being asked to do is to stay aware of this astounding alchemical process that we're now all in, in which we're being devastated and redeemed, slaughtered and reborn at the same time. So what's needed for all of us is to build this container to be able to contain these opposites without veering to despair or veering to too floaty, floaty, magical thinking, staying stable, watching, really contemplating, but asking most of all, and I think this is the most important thing that I could say to you, asking for the grace from the beloved to develop what I call birth eyes. It's what's really important for sacred activists and for all people who want to be of service to the future is to pray for the divine insight to be able to see where, where the birth is appearing and it's appearing. It's appearing in all the acts of courage I've been talking about. It's appearing in the extraordinary visions that is appearing amongst generals, amongst business people of the kind of world that we're going to have to create if we're going to be able to preserve the world. An immense tragedy has caused an immense urgency and the immense urgency has engendered a new set of crystallized, pragmatic, very noble visions, which will need our total support. They're coming, they're here, and they're longing for you to recognize them because when you recognize them, you will be filled with a rugged, noble hope. The fifth suggestion, is a very important one I found. It's very important to grieve. So when grief comes to you, when heartbreak reveals itself as a possibility in your heart, don't indulge in happy talk. Don't think that there's anything weird about heartbreak. Realize that heartbreak is the sign that you have a heart at all. It's like the tin man in Dorothy who says, no, I know I have a heart because it's broken. You're only heartbroken and you're not using that heartbreak or letting that heartbreak guide you into a vaster compassion and a deeper, deeper focus on what you can do to bring in and sustain the structures that could end those injustices, you're not divine. So allow yourself time to grieve. Heartbreak is sacred. It won't kill you. It won't drive you mad. It will make you more human, kinder, more loving, more passionate about justice and braver if you let it. It's a divine gift sent to ennoble you. The sixth suggestion and I know all of you know this, but it's so sacred at this moment. It's as if in the middle of all of this tragic agony that we're living, the mother is joining us again in tribes and networks of grace, as if she's forming out of the decay, these new alignments that if we stay with them, if we realize the gift of what we've been given, and truly cultivate at a much deeper level than we've ever done before the sacred power of friendship, the sacred power that comes from loving our animals with a deeper love, then we will go out into the new world that will appear, and it will be a bloody world, a difficult world, a brutal world. We'll go out flanked with people whose spirits will be supporting us and whose spirits we will supporting for the great struggle to birth a new way of being and doing everything. Note the ultimate nature of reality is bliss. In the Taittiriya Upanishad, forgive me if I quote from the Sanskrit scriptures, but it's all there, baby. In the Taittiriya Upanishads, it says, from the great bliss, all things arise. In the great bliss, all things are sustained. 
and to the great bliss, all things return. That is in poetry. That is the experience you have when you awaken. That is the experience that you have in an unforgettable and overwhelming way which forever changes your life when through the grace of the beloved, you are initiated into the ultimate truth of reality. But what that experience should lead us to do, especially at a time like this, is to cultivate daily joy, to really tune our whole being to that ultimate reality so that we can bring into the middle of the burning world presences lit up by the golden light of the joy that doesn't need anything because it comes straight from the truth, straight from the source. And turn to the source of joy wherever you find it and worship beauty as the sister of joy, whether it's in music or in the eyes of a friend or in the light shining in the summer in the core of a tree, wherever it is, know that it is beauty itself kissing you. Know it is the joy, the ananda of the Godhead that's reaching out to you. And let that joy give you strength, give you courage, give you chutzpah, give you peace. And keep calm, carry on.